This week, two point, in this session will be about 2.6, implicit differentiation. That means so far we did learn a definition of the derivative. We also learned some shortcuts, some formulas uh, in last week, like the product rule, the quotient rule, and the most important one, the, the, the power rule. How can we like differentiate, not really using a limit definition, how can we get the derivative of the function? We still have to know the limit definition, understand, but of course it's helpful to know the shortcuts. But now let's see like another method, another technique of taking the de derivative. That means what we will have. We will have I will try to use everyone. Okay, because I hear a feedback. Okay, that means so far we did differentiate, but we did differentiate functions like in the where were they were defined in the nice explicit way. As we can see, we do have y on one side because that's the function y which depends on x, and on the right hand side we have the formula like x times sine of x, maybe square root of x squared plus one, or just general a formula for the function y, f of x. That's we probably know we don't have to do this stuff. We probably know what to do. We can use the shortcuts and we can get the derivative. But now we may have a formula. We may have, oh, my slides are not changing. We may have the formulas like that, okay? Like first, first one is x squared plus y squared equals 25 which probably you know what's the shape. Do you know what's the shape of this equation? Mm, no, oh, x squared plus, it's a circle. Yes, thank you, Joe. It's a circle with, in the center uh, zero, zero, and the radius five. Yep, that's, me. that's nice equation. And however, if we think about the circles and applying a vertical line test, circle is not really a function. Yeah? because the ver vertical line will intersect the curve twice. But it's still a curve. It's not a function, but it's still a curve. I can draw a tangent line. That means i supposed to have a slope of the tangent, which means i supposed to differentiate that curve. Okay? That's, that's my point, finding the derivative. And not even mention the second curve, x, square, x cubed plus y cubed equals to 6xy. The same thing, we don't really know what's the shape of this one, but we can definitely see it's not that curve, it's not a function, but it, and it's also not defined uh, explicitly, the same like the circle. And as we can see, we do have an equation that we don't really have nicely y on one side, okay? and that all of the x form, all of the x variable on the other side. That means that's, the way that we may have uh, defined curves, and we will call that the, 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 defini the, the formula is a little bit like hidden, the formula of y, it's hidden. We will call that it's defined implicitly. Okay? That means we do have a method to deal with this type of equations, this type of curves, in order to find the derivative. But what we will do, in order to find that way, I will actually take the first equation. Because we can see the first equation, the equation of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals to 25, it's still not bad. I believe we can solve it for y, which normally this will be not our practice. We will not do this way. We will use the new method. But before that, let's actually apply the old method. I mean, I will take this equation, x squared plus y squared equals to 25, and I will try to solve for y, which means I'm subtracting x squared from both sides, and now solving for y, I have to take the square root of both sides, which I have positive and negative. And the positive square root represent, of course, a function, and the negative represent a function. Uh, graphically, this means that the positive one is the upper circle, a semicircle, and the negative is the lower one, negative below the x-axis. Okay, that means now we do have one equation, and this represents a function, and it's defined 
explicitly we have a formula of y in terms of x and i think no problem in order to find the derivative i can use the chain rule of course and i can get derivative derivative of the square root it's one over two identical square roots times the derivative of the inner function which is negative 2x and the same way on this side of course i can cancel out a common factor okay as we can see for the blue one for the blue curve we have negative x over square root of 25 minus x squared for the yellow one the negative one we have x over square root of quantity 25 minus x squared okay that's mean i did manage it's not i still got the derivative it's not extremely long process but of course we know that that's not necessary the way because if i will think about the second equation let's see this equation we can probably think okay let's try to solve for y but do, do you think this equation is easy to solve for y it's easy to isolate y on one side like we have y cube and we have y let's mean how can i how can i isolate probably since it's y cube i might expect like three different equations and okay? like three different parts of the curve that will create a function but all together is just the curve which is not a function i can actually show you this is the curve and we do have a name but we don't really have to focus on the name just in case if you will volume this cartes you can you can remember but it's nice it's kind of like a loop we can see that means it's definitely not a function i can cut it i can restrict the domain and have the have the part uh, of the curve that it is a function and then respectively for each part i should have an equation that means i can show you because even if i will start doing now i don't think an hour or two or three will be enough to solve this equation for y that mean i did ask computer and i can show you don't worry it's just to showing you what are the equations if this expression is solved for y let's look at this the first one the second one and the third one because this is addition and subtraction okay that we can see the first one i know yeah it's really simple Hmm. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. For some reason, I got the message on the screen that is mute. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That we can see the first equation represents that part of the loop, and it is function. Okay. The second equation, like the addition will represent this and the subtraction of the entire part will be that the last one that we can and let's look at all of this cube root square root we don't want to differentiate this we probably we know how to differentiate okay? but we don't we don't really want to deal with this that's the reason that we have much much simple method okay? that means this is just showing you how helpful will be the new method rather than thinking about the explicit way Okay, that's me. Let's see. Let's do this. That's me. What we will have? Uh, we will have a method that we will call implicit differentiation method, and this, okay, this method uh, will involve differentiating both sides of the equation of the original equation, and of course with respect to x, still thinking that function y is the function which depends on x okay that's mean we can see and i can that's mean what we will do we will take an equation like it is we will not change anything and we will try to find out y prime or if we prefer dy dx is maybe a bit a little bit more uh, a little bit more like exact formula because it's we really showing that we do we finding the derivative of y with respect to x which theoretically we don't know what is y because you you saw the previous slide we don't even want to know the exact y formula in some cases 
That means what we will do, we will have some time, like let's say part of the equation will be x cubed. Can you tell me what's the derivative of x cubed? Because we have to differentiate with respect to x, x cubed. Of course. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Tori. Thank you. Thank you for nice participation. Oh, okay. 3x squared. But we will always meet something like that. Okay, that means we, all, we, also, we also have to differentiate something like y cube. We're still thinking that y is the, y is the function, the inner function. That means in order to differentiate y cube, I will still follow the same rules, like a power rule, 3y squared, but I have to add a chain rule. That means 3y squared times derivative of that y. Okay, that means times dy dx. I don't know exactly what is y, but I know that I have to. I have to place dy dx because behind y, we do have a formula. Okay, if we will solve it for y. That means, please remember, that will be the difference. Differentiating y cube, um, we will have 3y squared times dy dx. Differentiating x cubed, just 3x squared. No problem. And that means that's the difference. And let's just try. That means that's nothing else. It's just always remembering about dy dx. If you prefer a shortcut, you can type y prime. Okay. That means what we will do now. We, we did solve this uh, derivative. We get this derivative through the normal explicit way. But now, let's try to use the new method, implicit differentiation. Okay? That means that's what it is about. Left-hand side, x squared plus y squared, and we, it will be, we have to differentiate with respect to x, and the right-hand side, 25, with respect to x. That's in please note, we're not, take, we're not simplifying, we're not rewriting, we're not solving for y. Just taking like it is and differentiating. And now, let's see what I have. Derivative of x squared, of course, 2x. Derivative of y squared, 2y, dy, dx. Okay. And the derivative of the constant, of course, 0. Okay, and differentiating means looking for dy dx. That means I can take my equation and solve for dy dx, subtracting 2x from both sides and dividing by 2y. 2 I got. That means this is the derivative of this circle, negative x over y. The only thing is, the final answer you probably notice is in terms of x and y. Normally, our final answer will be just in terms of x. But we, since we don't know the formula for y, we have to just say y. y will be part of this derivative, but we don't know what y is. Okay? That means that's the only difference. Using implicit differentiation, the final answer will be in terms of x and y. And some, some of the cases we can get equation of the y, which actually for this one we can. That means let's see. Uh, let's look at the middle part. We did the, the positive one, and we remember that was the derivative. We did the negative semicircle, and we got that answer. And we also took the entire equation, apply implicit differentiation, and got this one. And what do you think? All of the forms, do you think they are the same? Or they are comparable? They look, do you think they look the same? Or at least this one must be the same like these two. Because of course, they are slightly different. Do you think that, because we will call the implicit differentiation, the final answer of this, we will call that this is the general form, the most general form of the derivative. Because this match to this one, and this one. That means, let's see, you can probably see the difference. We do have x on the top in the numerator, but we have y. And can you see what y is equal to? That's y. That means if I will take this formula 
and substitute instead of y, I will actually get, I will get my form just in terms of x. And the same for this one. This one is negative, but the negative will be cancelled. Okay? That's we can see both of them, both of these, the single one, the explicit one, uh, has the representation in this one. Okay? That means the negative x over y represents the most general antiderivative. Uh, the derivative, derivative. We still didn't reach the antiderivative. Yes, it's the general form of the derivative because we use the implicit implicit method. Okay, that means now let's take this equation. I did prepare like three parts of the question. Like just practicing, we can also apply some uh, some other like things which are connected to the derivative. Okay, that means part A is to find the derivative of x cubed plus y cubed 6xy. Part B, okay, we have to find uh, a tangent to that curve at the point 3, point, three, uh, three, three. Okay, that we have to find the equation of the tangent line. We have a point, we can get the derivative, no problem. And then part C is asking at what points in the first quadrant the tangent line is horizontal. Okay, we remember the loop, we have to find the point where the tangent is horizontal. Okay, let me let's start. Let's differentiate. That's we're not gonna solve it. We're gonna just take it like it is, and we will get the derivative. Okay, um, we have to differentiate x cube. And one more time, do you think what do you know? What's the derivative of x cube? Yes, three x squared. Excellent. Okay, I can I can ask you all of the questions, and then I can show you the line. Uh, what about y cube? That's a little bit of challenge. What is the derivative? Yes, it's 3y squared times y prime. Oh, dy dx, but y prime is good. Yes, good. And now, yes, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Tori. That means we know, we know the left-hand side. Now, I, I even, I can wait a little bit, but I would like to ask you, what do you think? What is the derivative on the right hand side? 6xy. Oh yes, exactly. That's my that's my concern. That's my point. We have to, okay? We have to like realize that we do have a product. That's we have to use a product rule. Yes, Daniel, correct. That's mean, do you think can you type, can you tell me the derivative of 6xy? Applying a product rule. Please try. I can give you like a few seconds. You can type and then I can show you the answer. Oh, zero? No. We do have function 6x. That's one function. And we have y. Oh, no. We don't have constant. We do have 6x. That's, that's the constant multiple. Uh, Os Elizabeth, something is missing. 6y and then 6x. Um, okay, okay. I see the logic and I see the product rule, but we have to remember about y prime. That means um, oh yes, I think Joe, that's the correct answer. Because we have to copy function 6x times derivative of y, okay, I maybe I didn't ask you. Derivative of y is simply dy dx. Or if we like, I can write derivative of y with respect to x, we know, we know that y has the formula. It will be actually the same thing. That means in order to differentiate the derivative of y, it's still y prime or dy dx. Yes, it's not one. And then y times 6x, it's 6. Correct? Correct. That means x cubed is 3x squared, y cubed is 3y squared dy dx. We can see this. And I think I switched the order. Derivative of 6x is 6 times y, and then 6x times derivative of y. Okay, that means derivative of y, please remember, it is just y prime or dy dx. 
Okay, that means now I see this and this. These two terms contain dy dx. I have to move them on one side and factor out dy dx and solve for dy dx. I did subtract this from both sides and of course I did move 3x squared on the other side. Now factoring out dy dx and dividing by 3y squared minus 6x. I think common factor is 3 on both. That means this is my final answer. Okay. Derivative of that curve, we can see how, how few, just few steps. We don't have to think about the equation of the y. We still, if we will need, I mean, we can put the formula for y, but you, saw, you, you know how big and how complicated, how complex the formula for y is. Okay, that we can see, we have to simply leave it like that. That means sometimes we will have a little bit of like, uh, like some additional steps because that y will be not really helpful because we will only have information about the x. But normally it's not a problem. We can always find out what y is, especially at one point. Okay, that means that's the derivative. Now, the second question, the part B was, find the tangent line at the point 3, 3. That means that's my derivative, point 3, 3. Do you think, do you know what we have to do to get the, because first of all, slope. What we have to do to get the slope of the tangent at the point 3, 3. Yeah, we have to get y prime is the slope, right? That means this is slope, which means we have to just substitute 3, 3. Yes, substitute, yes, thank you. That's what I, yes, yeah, no, 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 it's good. That's what I was waiting for. That means let's put 3, 2 times 3 minus 3 squared, 3 squared minus 2 times 3. Actually, it's the same value, just opposite, negative 1. That's because this will be 6 minus 9, 9 minus 6 exactly the same value but opposite sign negative one that means i'm using it as always point slope form simplifying i have negative x plus six that's my tangent line and we can check okay. blue is the curve and this is tangent line at the point three three and i think looks good negative makes sense the line is going down it's negative slope and six like a y intercept just checking if the computations are correct okay. that's we can see nothing different just using different way to get the derivative and the part c was asking us for the horizontal tangent that we have to let me come back maybe in the first quadrant yeah, if you remember in the in in the first quadrant I have to find, oh, I don't know, probably somewhere here. I have to find that point where tangent is horizontal, question mark. Okay, we can see this red dot. That's we have to find that value of x, that the tangent is horizontal. It's definitely zero, zero, I would say, but zero, zero is, not really in like in the first quadrant, but zero is also a point. But what about this one? And it's nice because we know that it's a little bit less than three, okay, but let's see. We all remember when we're asking for the horizontal tangent, derivative must be zero. That's me, let's take the derivative. That's the derivative. And this one, this has to be zero. That's we can see. That's the moment that we have a little bit of challenge because I can't really solve this equation for x and get the value. I can solve it for x, but I will have the answer in terms of y. Okay, okay that's me. let's see, let's simplify. First of all, a fraction is equal to zero if and only if the top is zero. We can't divide by zero. I can even say that the, this denominator cannot be zero. That will be kind of like a derivative. 
Okay, that means I have 2y minus x squared is zero, then the whole fraction is zero, then the derivative is zero. But as I said, mm, not really helpful. I can solve probably for y, adding x squared and dividing by two, because I can avoid a square root. That means what I have, I have not really the value, I only have the relation between x and y for the tangent to be horizontal. That means what I can do, I, if since I have x and y to be computed, okay, I have to create a system of two equations, which this one will be the first one. That means what do you think, what is the other equation that I can use? What is the other relation between x and y that possibly was given? Uh, Sorry, oh, you saying that I, it will be helpful to solve this for x? I can solve this for x, but this will be positive and negative square root of uh, 2y. That means it's something this, kind of like this because I have to multiply by 2 and take the square root. That means looks even, I think, less helpful. Yeah, I mean, either way, either way, I can solve for y or I can solve for x, but this is still the same equation. What, I'm, what, I'm, what I meant, I would like to find another equation that I can maybe take this expression as a y and substitute instead of, like, like solving by substitution. You probably remember the middle school, the system of two equations, if we have x and y to be found. Okay, that means this is the moment that what we will do we have to find the second equation and we do have a second equation okay we do have the second equation because the second equation is simply the original equation we can see that's also that's also a relation between x and y and this is my curve we know that loop yeah i can kind of draw that loop oh not really let me okay that means this is my loop and I'm looking for the tangent. That means the only thing that I have, I have the relation for the tangent between x and y and I have the formula for the loop. And we can see this red dot, they do have, a, that's the common point. Okay? That means I can say that y equals to x squared plus two and I can solve a system of two equations which this means I can take this y expression and substitute instead of y in this, in this second equation. That means we do have x cubed, x cubed, y cubed. It's gonna look like that, x squared over two cubed. Six x and instead of y, this. And now you can see, not nice equation, but at least in terms of x only. Okay, that means this is this one additional step. Okay. Let's cube, x squared and, and cube will be x to the power of six, we multiplying, two to the power of three is eight. Six x, uh, six divided by two is three, x times x squared, x cubed. I can multiply both sides by eight. Oh, actually what I did, I did subtract x cubed from both sides, okay, I can do this. I can multiply by eight now, uh, I did multiply by eight. That's what I wanted to do right away. I did multiply by eight and then subtract 16. Yeah, it's just a few steps to solve the equation. And now I have nice equation, at least no fractions, x to the power of six minus 16 x to the power of three. That means x cubed is a common factor. And we can see x cubed is zero. If this is zero, and x cubed minus 16 is zero if x cubed equals to 16, so x equals to cube root of 16. And I think we can live it like that. We can, I did use the calculator, but we don't really have to. We can live, I mean, we don't have even calculators available. That means cube root of 16 is good. Okay, that's when you can see this is the, that's the point. And cube root of 16, it is 2.5, which do you remember, it's supposed to be less than three before a point three. Okay, that means this is the X value.
If we have to compute y value, we can take this x squared over 2 and substitute cube root of 16 squared over 2, which we can just leave it. I think I have a few steps, but this will be your final answer. Okay? The x value and the y value. We don't really like we will not ask you to simplify. I did simplify a little bit. Okay. Because two to the power of four it's sixteen. I don't know what I okay, I kind of like take the power of two because this will be four times two is eight divide by three as a fraction as a x fraction in the exponent because it's the cube root and then eight over three minus one is five over three but don't don't worry i know that most of you will understand the steps but these boxes are the final answers right but the most important message on this slide is that we have to use both equations, the derivative and the original one. Okay? I will box this for you. Please remember, in order to solve for x and y. Okay, and I have the graph. Oh, don't worry for the values. No, 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 no. Uh, 2.5, 3.1. Okay, that means this is, we can see just the first quadrant, and that will be the point with the horizontal, horizontal tangent. We also have a zero, as we remember, but zero, zero we also got from the equation, but the first quadrant. Okay, that means just to know how to uh, apply the implicit differentiation. That means this question is quite, yes, quite good, covering almost everything for the implicit differentiation. Okay, now I have nice, easy, multiple choice question, exam type question. Let's see if we can get this. Okay, we have to find dy dx for the equation x squared y minus x y cubed equals to eight. That means we will take, I didn't type, derivative with respect to x of the left and the right hand side and also please remember about the product i will put the red dots okay let's differentiate product rule and of course the implicit differentiation derivative of y it's simply y prime or dy dx that means let's take care of this. Derivative of x squared is 2x times y plus x squared and derivative of y dy dx minus derivative of x, it's 1, I don't have to write it down, times x cubed plus x, derivative of y cubed is 3y squared dy dx derivative of 8 of the constant 0 okay. also we can see this negative is affecting both values that means make sure that you distribute that negative okay 2xy let me put dy dx as a y prime Okay, x squared times y prime, y cube and minus y prime. Okay, now let's solve for y prime. This and this will stay. x squared y prime, 3x y squared y prime. I will add y cube and subtract 2xy. Now, you probably know what's the final answer. Let's factor out y prime, x squared, 3x, y squared. And I have to divide by x, both sides of the equation, by x squared minus 3x, y 
squared and I believe which option is correct. Do you think this one is the right one? We can double check. X squared, three X, Y squared. Okay. That means we have to be confident and we have to master to differentiate using the implicit differentiation, but also we have to know how to apply for the further like uh, exercise. Okay, that's, I didn't miss any sign. I didn't miss any derivatives, especially. And please remember negative and negative. And also eight, can you see the eight is gone? Derivative of eight is zero. That means that's not good options, B and C. Okay, let's see next one. Similar thing. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> I didn't switch off my phone. <laughs> okay. Find the equation of the tangent line to the curve xy plus x plus y squared equals to 11 at the point 1, 2. Okay, we know that the equation of the tangent line, we need a slope, which means derivative at the point 1. Or probably I will use 1 and 2, x and y, because my derivative using the implicit differentiation will include y also. Normally, do you remember? Normally we need just the x value. Okay, let's try. First of all, derivative. xy, derivative of xy is, again, product rule. Derivative of x is one times y plus x times derivative of y. Now I have x plus y squared. That means I have quantity squared, like u squared. Do you remember the chain rule? Derivative of this is two times the quantity times derivative of this quantity. Derivative of x is one, derivative of y, it's y prime. And we can see two times u times u prime. If we will think about the label u, the notation u. Two times x plus y, and now derivative of x, derivative of y. And derivative of 11, of course, zero. And now what I can do, because please also like be a little bit like um, patient. We don't have to really solve this equation like for y, for y prime. I mean, what, what, I, what, I, what I'm trying to say, we don't have to have nice simplified formula because let's look at this. You can see how many steps we have to take to get nice simple form, okay? And it is easy to, to make the mistake, of course. Of course, we don't wanna make the mistake. That means let's look at this question. We're not asking, we're not asking exactly for the formula. We're asking just for the value of y prime at point one, two. That means what I will do, I will take the advantage of this and I will substitute instead of x1, instead of y2. Let's see what we have. We have one times y, which this will be two. We have x, which is one and y prime, two x plus y, one plus y prime, zero. And now, two plus y prime, one plus two is three, three times two is six, one plus y prime, two y prime, six plus six prime, zero. And okay, that we can see, of course, I will still keep working, but that's what I'm saying. It's much, much simpler to have the values instead of like a variable x and y, okay? y prime plus 6y prime is 7y prime. 2 plus 6 is 8, subtracting on both sides. Negative 8 over 7. This is a slope. Okay? Negative 8 over 7. And now we have to find the equation. Oh, however, 
Are we lucky? Do you think you can tell me the answer? Yes, of course, because the only slope with negative eight over seven, it's actually option A. This one is opposite and this, this one are different, okay? That means I, theoretically, I don't have to even compute the coefficient, I mean the y-intercept. But what we can do, we can always use the point slope, just in case if you have still an option to choose. y minus two, slope, x minus one. That means this is the equation, and I believe we have to get 22 over seven as a y-intercept. Okay, but I will skip my calculation because I'm definitely 100% sure that that's my correct slope. Okay? But please take the advantage of the point. If we don't have a point, one more time, I can come back to this slide. We have to follow nicely the algebra, the arithmetic steps, and get the formula, simplified formula. If we don't, if we do have a point, we can use it. Okay. What else I have? Uh, okay, this is not multiple choice, but it's also an implicit equation, and we have to find dy uh, dx, but it's the trigonometric one. Okay, let's see. I will differentiate the left and the right hand side. Oh, I think I did type it. I was planning to write it down. Okay, derivative of the left and derivative on, on the right hand side. We do have products. Okay, the derivative of sine of x plus y. Can you actually, do you think you can tell me what's the derivative of this? Because I would like to ask you. Mm, derivative of, we have of course chain rule and y hidden inside. That means what's the derivative of sine function? Do you remember that? Yes, cosine. Cosine, yeah. yeah. I, I, of course, we need always like an angle. That means derivative of sine, it's cosine of the same quantity, which will be cosine x plus y times derivative of x plus y. Okay, which this will be derivative of x plus y, it's one plus y prime. Okay, we did this side. What about the right hand side? we actually have y squared times cosine of x. That means, can you type probably, for, not for the first time, but can you type the derivative of y squared? What's the derivative? Yes, dy y prime. Of course, that means that's what I'm trying to point out. Do not forget y prime. And then applying a product rule, of course, we will get this. Let's see. Derivative of sine is cosine of the same angle times derivative of x, derivative of y. Now, derivative of y squared is 2yy prime times cosine, and then theoretically should be plus, and then y squared derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x, but negative and negative will give me, I mean negative and positive will give me negative. I just move that negative of the derivative in front of the whole expression. Okay, now I, I don't think I have a point like given, that means I really have to find a nice formula for y prime. First of all, I will distribute, that means this is one term and I will multiply by one and multiply by y prime. Can you see cosine, cosine of cosine x, uh, cosine x plus y times one, which actually I did subtract right away. Yeah, I can write, I can write for you, and I will erase later. Okay, that's me. What I will do? I will multiply cosine x plus y times one plus cosine x plus y times y prime and then copy this because i think i did skip one step now i need that term 
and this term on one side, because both of them contains y prime. Let's see, y prime, cosine, and minus 2y, y prime, cosine x. Negative y squared sine of x, and subtracting cosine of x plus y. Okay, now factoring out y prime, or not equal to cosine of x plus y, 2y cosine of x, and still the same thing. I know it looks long, but we know what we're doing. Of course, the second line is the most important one. And now I have to just divide both sides by this expression. I mean, negative the right hand side divide by cosine xy x plus y minus 2y cosine of x. Okay, that means this is my final answer for the derivative y prime. Okay. That's one more time, make sure that you okay with the second line and the rest of them is just a few algebra or even the arithmetic steps. Okay. And I do have one more exercise, and then we will jump to the section 2.7. Let's see. Now you will probably see my typing. Don't worry. I will remove the writing or typing later. Okay. That's me. Let's do one more exercise. Let's try to find a second derivative using the implicit differentiation. Okay. And I picked quite easy uh, equation. But what it is, we will have few steps that we always have to like employ in order to simplify a final answer. That means, let's see, in order to get the second derivative, of course, we need the first one first. That means the first derivative using implicit differentiation will be like that 2x, 2y, y prime, and 0. Solving for y prime, I'm getting this. Okay, now the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. That means I will take again the equation and differentiating the left and the right hand side. Left is nothing to do because derivative of y prime will be y double prime, just the second derivative. But here we have to differentiate, thinking about x and y, of course, in the right way, and quotient rule. At me. Let's see. Y double prime. Derivative of negative x is negative 1 times y minus negative x times derivative of the denominator, y prime, denominator squared. Okay. At me. Let's see what we have just after this first step. We have x and y, of course, but we also have additional item, y prime. That means I would say it's a little bit too much. That means this is the first step that we will actually replace because we do have, luckily, we do have the formula for y prime, right? We have the formula for y prime in terms of x and y. That means at least I can keep my final answer in terms of x, y only. I don't need like additional, like y prime. Okay, I mean, that's what I did. I did substitute negative x over y. Negative and negative gave me positive. Okay, now let's simplify. Because I said that we have two important steps, always to remember, to, to like apply them. That means this is the first one. This is still the first one. Okay, uh, let now we have to simplify. We have too many fractions. I will multiply each term by y. Oh, I still didn't. I just put the negative in front. That means now 
what is my next step? Okay, that means my next step is to multiply everything by y. This one, this one, and this one. Negative y times y is negative y squared, but x squared over y times y, I will cancel out these y's. That's actually the point, right? Get rid of that. That means negative y squared, for that fraction, the y is gone, negative x squared, and y squared times y, y cube. Okay, looks good. But now, I will factor out negative. And do you see what we have actually here? What we got here? x squared plus y squared. Do you think we can replace with something? What is x squared plus y squared equal to? It is nine, right? That means this is the second step. Okay. That means the final answer is negative nine over y cube. That means I can tell you it's quite common and almost, I mean, sometimes the formulas are a little bit like challenge and hidden. But this, these two steps you should always, always apply in order to simplify the second derivative using the implicit differentiation. That means always replace the formula for y prime for the first derivative. And at the end, like try to rewrite, try to like move the terms around and always try to see the original equation. You will always see the original equation in the second derivative and then replace it. It's really nice and neat because that's the final form. Okay, that means that was my last question. That means make sure I will, of course, I do have a little bit more questions, but I will um, put the, the separate video just with the practice. That means check the module, practice with Kasia, and check section 2.6, okay? Then you will not miss any question on the test, on the quiz. Okay, now what we have, we do have one more thing. We have section 2.7, which is just here, yeah, just the application of the derivatives. And this section, it's quite long if you will check the textbook, but we will focus only, only of, of some applications, some rate of change in physics, which you're probably guessing, it's gonna be the velocity and acceleration only, okay? That means what it is, we have to know that the instantaneous rate of change of the distance with respect to time, of course, is the instantaneous velocity, and we will always use uh, for that the rate of change is just the derivative. Okay? That means this will be the derivative of the original function, original position function, first derivative. Acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity with respect to time, which means we have to differentiate twice a second derivative of the original function. That means that's what we have to know. And I did prepare the first question. That means this is the only question and the only, un only, only parts that we have to know how to answer. Okay, that means you. If you will know how to find the velocity, acceleration, and some other like motion question, you should be fine with section 2.7 because we're not gonna talk about the further applications. Like in, in biology, in economics, no. We will just focus on this one. Okay, let me, let's see what we have. We do have a function, position function of the particle moving and it's defined as a T cube minus 60 squared plus 90. Okay, and then what we have to do? We have to find out, first of all, velocity as a function of time. Then velocity at two seconds and at four seconds. Then when is the particle at rest? When the particle is moving in the positive direction? And then D is just like, showing a motion like the positive direction and negative direction. Now we have to find the total distance traveled okay, of the particle during the first five seconds, find the acceleration or as a function of time and then after four seconds, and then graph the position, velocity and acceleration, 
and quite important when is the particle speeding up and when it's slowing down that's me. let's just go through all of these parts and we will be done for today okay velocity we just learned that the velocity is simply the first derivative okay? and i hope this is correct you can double check with me t cube it's 3t squared 6t squared 12t negative and plus 9 quadratic function quite nice now they ask the velocity at 2 which we can substitute to 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 9 and i believe i did the math correctly 3 times 4 minus 24 plus 9 12 negative 12 plus 9 it is negative 3 that we can see negative negative rate of change okay? that means something is going like down or neg in negative direction meters per seconds rate of change over the distance distance over the time okay and i think we have to do four also three times four squared minus 12 times four plus nine oh shall we double check three times 16 minus 48 plus nine oh that's actually 48 three times 16 right okay nine meters per second okay that's mean we know the velocity and just the substitution now the question is when is the particle at rest do you possibly know the condition in terms of math of course in terms of the calculus what are the conditions that the particle is not moving what do you think in terms of acceleration or velocity slope is zero yes yes exactly slope is zero which means which means the first derivative is zero in this case the velocity is zero really good mm -hmm. i can write this s prime the first derivative must be zero okay? not the value of the function no just yeah, just just the velocity the slope zero really good mm -hmm. and what was the velocity the velocity was three t squared minus 12 t plus 9 and we have to solve this quadratic equation for zero let's factor out three. Oh, i should type zero and i believe we can nicely factor out t minus one t minus three okay and now at one second and at three seconds the particle will be at rest the slope of the curve will be zero slope of the tangent line to the curve okay and let me make sure that we know quadratic equation okay another part okay the particle is at rest after one second and after three seconds i would say at exactly at one second exactly at three seconds okay now the particle moves in the positive direction okay, you'd also probably know if the rate of change distance with respect to time it's positive which means when the velocity is positive positive direction means this, the first derivative is positive that means now i have the same equation but i mean the same expression but i have to create inequality factor out three factor out and oh i do have the final answer but i hope you know how to get this we know that the zeros the particle is at rest at one and at three Yes, that's my velocity. Oh, I can put t. In order to find where the velocity is positive, we have to test these intervals. Okay? That means if I will take a test value, let's say four, if I substitute four instead of t, four minus one, four minus three, I will have definitely a positive number. 
Okay? If I will put the number between one and three, uh, two. Two minus one is positive, but two minus three is negative. Positive times negative is negative. And let's take zero. If I put zero minus one, zero minus three, it's negative number times negative number, again positive. That means the velocity is positive. If t is from negative infinity to one and from three, to infinity. However, I have to make the correction because I don't really have infinity. Okay? We're talking about the time, that means we have to cut at zero. And we're not looking at the other values. Normally, this will be the solution of the inequality, but this is application, time is positive. That means that's the final answer. The particle is moving in the positive direction between zero and one and three and to infinity. Also make sure that you know how to find um, the solution of the inequality, quadratic inequality. Another way actually to solve it is because we can see this is quadratic function. Can you type, can you tell me what is the graph of the quadratic function? What's the graph? If I, will, if I will ask you to graph a quadratic function, what shape has a quad? Parabola, right? It's parabola. And looking at the leading coefficient, can you tell me if the parabola is open up or down? It's up because it's positive. And I know my zeros, one and three. That means the only thing that I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to draw. Huh? A parabola with one and three being at zero. And we can see that part between zero and one is above the x-axis. After three also is above the x-axis. That mean, means positive, greater than zero. That means you can also like draw a parabola, draw a function and read a solution. Or you may use the test values. Okay, that we know when the particle is moving in the positive direction. Of course, negative direction is between one second and three seconds. Okay? That means it's kind of like it's moving in the positive direction. Okay, from zero to one second. I can draw some. And then it's at rest. And between uh, one and three seconds, actually, it's moving backwards. Yeah, that means you can like imagine yourself walking, walking to the positive, like walking forward, and then after one second, you changing the direction, and then at three seconds, you again walking, walking like in the positive direction. Whichever direction we will name positive or negative. That's walking forward, backwards, and forward. That means you can theoretically do, let's say, if you will do a few steps during one second, like if you will do two steps and then you will do another two steps backwards, your position, your original like displacement, it's actually zero because you did come back to the original place, but in fact, you did four steps. Yeah, that means that's the total distance travel. Let's see, because one of the questions is like that. Oh? Okay, that means this is kind of like what I was just trying to draw. Okay. It's just the diagram. It's nothing to do, nothing to do with like the x, y function. It's just showing simply a motion. Okay. From zero uh, time to one second, from one second to three seconds, and then after three is still positive. And we can see, do you know where that four come from? Because after one second, the, this, the position function, it has the value four. That means function was actually defined as a t cubed minus 60 squared plus 9t. And if I substitute one, let's see, one cubed minus six plus nine. Uh, negative five, it is four meters. Yeah, I think that's what I, I said. Between one, between zero and one, you kind of like did, let's say, four steps. 
okay but what you have to do you have to turn back and make another steps and looks like you make another four steps that's four meters and looks like four meters backwards okay let's check the position after three seconds because between one and three you walk backwards let's substitute three three cube six times three squared nine times three mm, 27 six times nine plus 27 27 plus 27 is 54 and six times um, six times nine actually it is 54 okay that means it's zero meters and you can see that mean we kind of like the the displacement is zero but can you tell me what is the total distance traveled between between zero and three seconds how many steps or how many meters you moved between zero seconds and three seconds? And you see, we kind of answering the next question, I, I believe. Okay, how many meters did you move? It is eight, right? Mm -hmm. Because we actually, we're not subtracting them. You still, you still did, like you still did move four meters and another four. It is eight, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's absolute value. That's what I was trying to, Mm -hmm. to to draw the absolute value but in fact i'm still in the same place if somebody will like look at me i would somebody will say no yeah this is zero you're still in you're still in the original spot but i did move back and forth that means that's also important eight meters was actually traveled okay now let's see that's it yeah, that's the the question we have to find a total distance in the first five seconds. Okay? That means, please remember, we can't, we can't just find S at five. Because S at five will give me, uh, let's come back, five will be, I don't know, somewhere here. That will give me just a few, probably a little bit more, few steps, but I will miss that four and four. That means I have to look at these three intervals between zero and one, and we know that it's four meters. Between one and three is also four meters. It's backwards, but it is four. And then I have to find out how many meters the particle moved between three and five. That means this is four. This is another four. We can see I'm just trying to get the values. And between three and five, I have to get the difference S, I think we've, we named the function S or oh, F doesn't matter. The difference between uh, S at five minus S at three, okay? which will be at three is zero displacement, 20 you can just, sub, that's what I did. I can calculate for you. This will be five cube minus six times five squared plus nine times five. Let's see if we can get 20. Five cube is 125. Six times 25. And nine times five, 45. Um, you have to help me. Six times 25, I think it's 150. 150. Oh, not 49, 45. That means this is negative 25 plus 45, okay? It is 20. That means exactly the displacement is 20 meters. Okay? But we have to get, make, make, take a difference between displacement at three, but at zero. That means 20 meters. The total distance, tra the total distance travel is eight. That means, please remember, we're not canceling that negative. 28, actually 28. Four plus four plus 20. Normally the, the wrong answer will be 20, okay? but that's not true because we did travel back and forth. Okay, oh, okay, another part and we will be done. Acceleration, that's an original function. This is the first derivative for the velocity. 
and the second derivative is the acceleration. Nice, 60 minus 12. Yes. I can also draw the acceleration. 60 is just the line with uh, 60 minus 12. It's just the line with the slope 6 and y intercept negative 12. That's probably something like that. And x actually intercept is 2 because 6 times 2 is 12 minus 12, 0. Okay? That means this is my acceleration. I have to find the acceleration at 4, and at 4 is 12. Even my graph looks good. Meters per second square, the time squared. Okay. Oh, and I do have a graph of all of them. That means, let's see, you probably remember the blue. You remember the velocity, and I just draw the line. Uh, I also included the original function. But don't worry, because the original function is the cubic function. I don't know if we, it's not extremely challenged to get the, the, the graph, but it's still the third degree. But I really like you, I mean, I really, like, I really want you to be able to draw quadratic function, parabola, and of course, a line. Okay. Now, what is the question? The question is this one. Oh, I should actually ask you. <laughs> okay, you see the answer. We have to figure out what are the conditions for the velocity, oh, no, 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 for the particle to speed up, speed up and slow down. That's what do you think? We like, with just thinking like common sense, like logically, what is the condition for the particle to like, to, to speeding up? Of course, you see, yes, you see the answer. Because normally, normally we always answer, oh, the velocity or the acceleration must be positive. But what is important, it's important to combine both of these quantities. That means the particle is speeding up when velocity is positive and it's also increasing, which means increasing velocity, of course, is the positive acceleration. That means just shortly, shortly saying velocity and acceleration, they have to have the same sign. They both has to be positive or they both has to be negative. Okay? Because if both of them are positive, like everything is happening in the positive direction, like it's speeding up. Or we can also have negative velocity, which means the particle is still speeding up, but in the negative direction, but has to be decreasing. Okay, that means I, okay, I will write down. Okay, for the particle to speed up velocity and acceleration, they both have to be positive, or the same situation could happen in the negative direction, if they both negative. Okay, that means this is the condition, both positive or both negative. Okay? And of course, if they will have opposite sign, then it's they kind of like act against each other. They, the particle will slow down. That means for the particle to slows down, Velocity positive and acceleration negative or the opposite. Negative and positive. Okay, that means that's the conditions. And now the easiest way to get all of these conditions is the graph. That means what I will do, I don't know if I can manage here. We remember velocity, okay? One and three, that means this is velocity. And we remember, what color I can use? We remember acceleration, two. Okay, that means we do have, 
we do have a point that they intersect. Okay. Oh, actually, we don't need these points. No, no, no. We need just the zeros. We need one, two, and three. And let's see. I will divide. Yes, we need these points. Because at one and at three, the velocity is changing the sign. We can see positive and then negative positive again. At two, the acceleration is changing the sign. Below the x-axis means negative, above means positive. That means th these zeros of V and A is important. That means now what we have, we do have one, two, three, four intervals. This is the first interval, and you have to tell me this is the final thing. On this interval from zero to one, is the particle speeding up or slowing down? And then between one and two, yes, one second, I will write down between two and three and three to infinity. Okay, Tori is answering that is slowing down. And this is correct because can you see, can everybody see why it's slowing down? The velocity is positive, acceleration is negative, two different signs. Really good. I will write down. Where can I learn? Slows down. And I can quickly write velocity is positive. Uh, acceleration, it's negative. Two different signs. Okay, what about the second interval between one and two? Can you tell me? Between one and two, what is the sign of the blue curve? It's speeding up. Right, because the blue curve is negative and the yellow curve is negative. Both negatives, can you see that's the condition? Okay, that's the condition. That means V is less than zero, or oh, that's less than zero. And A, it's less than zero. Both of them have the same sign, the particle is speeding up. Uh, let me put speeds up. Okay, and then between two and three? Between two and three? Can you see it's slowing down again? Thank you, thank you. I hope, yes, we understand. Because the blue curve, which is the velocity, velocity is below, negative, acceleration is above, positive. Two different signs, not good for speed. Uh, slows down and what is happening after three seconds the particle is definitely speeds up thank you because it speeds up because both of them has the same sign and actually they are positive velocity is positive and acceleration is positive that means i can tell you that this is the easiest way instead of like thinking about the equations that we did cover each, each uh, condition for slows down and for speeds up. Okay, that means please remember but this, this is important, the conditions. That box is the reference box. And I think I have a little bit nicer graph. Okay. And we can see the, the functions I draw a little bit like uh, higher values. They are a little bit more flat. But the same is the same idea. That's two, that's three. Okay, this, oh no, no, that's not three. I, oh no, this is three. The zeros of the parabola and the zero of the acceleration. Okay, that means that's just the summary. Okay, that means I hope you, you're gonna be okay with the implicit differentiation and application just about the velocity and acceleration. Thank you.